today we're going to be drawing under the sea creatures and uh, we're going to start with the crab and then we'll move on to the whale, the mermaid and the shark will be the last one we're going to draw. Alright, let's get straight into it. Okay, welcome. I'm just adjusting the camera to get it all into position. Alrighty, I, as I said, I hope you've had a great weekend. You, you're um, ready to do some characters. We're going to start, make sure you've got yourself a HB pencil, some paper. We're going to start with the crab and we're going to draw a simple oval shape for the body. So let's start with an oval shape. My now it's a long one, okay, like a wide one. You could do a circle, you could do an oval shape, it's up to you. But this is the body of the crab, so I've made mine quite wide. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put two eyes on. I'm going to put a circle here and a circle next to it for the eyes. And thanks everyone for joining me. I hope you're, uh, you're excited as well. What we're going to do is draw a line down. Welcome back to people from Chatsworth State School. Good to see you guys back again. And I appreciate everyone's support logging in and watching these videos. So I've drawn two circles and then I've just drawn a couple of straight lines with a curved bottom. This is the eyes. You could bring them in a little bit further if you want. I'm just gonna rub out that little back bit. Let's put some eyeballs on those eyes. Now, if you wanted to make your crab look a little bit funny, you could position the eyeballs in opposite directions. I'm going to put mine sort of in the middle. It's going to be a standard sort of looking crab. And my crab is happy, so it's going to have a nice big smile. So I have a, a curve and then a bit of a straight line and then a curve back up for my smile on my crab. And then we're going to draw the legs and then the claws will come on after the end. So these shapes here, or these lines are curve line to a point and back to the body. Curve line to a point, back to the body. Curve line to a point, back to the body like so. And we'll do the same on the other side. One, two, and then three. Okay, so we've got the six legs on and then we've got the claws. All right, on the end of them, I'm just going to put some lines. So a little curved line on each of the, they're gonna be black little end pieces. And then we'll put another line on each leg, sorry. Each leg of the crab, like so. Uh, welcome. Malulabar State School, good to see some schools join us. That's fantastic, guys. Glad I can help out, help you guys out. All right, and now we're gonna draw two straight lines coming out. Now this is, if you want your uh, claws to be straight, you can, or you can bend them up. So I'm just gonna bend mine up like so, and these lines should be the same distance apart. And I'm gonna do the other so the same on the other side. Alrighty, so here we've got our little crab so far. Now to do the claws, I'm going to um, I'm going to show you an easy way to draw the claws, and that is by drawing a big oval shape on both of them, nice and light, so you can rub out it as well. Okay, so I'm going to. I hope you guys have done that. Remember, if you need to uh, pause it, you can and you can catch up as well. These videos take about a day to go up online properly. All right, so I'm gonna start from here and I'm gonna draw an angle line and then straight up like so. And then it's just a matter of putting a line out like that. And there we have our simple claw. If I rub that bit out there, you can just, okay. You can make them bumpy and you could do little, little um, points on the end if you wanted to but this is a simple, cute crab. So line across, 
or a diagonal line, line straight up and then a line out like so. And I might just curve that on the end a little bit there, make it look cool. There's our crab. All right, guys, I know that, I know that kids love to get into the coloring. So we're gonna do this one straight up. So let's get out our piece of paper underneath, our outliner, and we're gonna outline this. I'm gonna just use, this one's a stay anywhere permanent pen. This could be a Sharpie, but I'm just gonna outline it in thin pen. Oops, that one, sometimes they, yep, that one's still working. Just gonna outline, putting a bit more of a curve on that. Okay, the reason I draw in pencil first is so that if I'm not happy with it, I can rub it out and I'm not wasting pages and pages of paper. Because if you draw in a permanent marker straight up, you can waste your paper. All right. I'm gonna zoom in a little bit on that for you guys, just to, there you go, give you a bit more of a closer view. Um, seem to have swap back to it. Some of my pens are starting starting to run out here. Not sure what's going on. Go back to one of these ones. There we go. So this is where you can add any bits. You could add, if you wanted to make it a girl crab, you could add some little eyelashes there, some just little lines coming off the there. Sometimes these pens just need to be used a bit. Someone might have used this on a, another surface. I had a painting class this morning which was awesome. Lots of people did great paintings today in the studio. They were able to paint whatever they liked and I just helped guide them through that. Just gonna color in the tips of the claws. Now my favorite, my favorite crabs to eat, sorry guys, I do like eating crabs. Uh, ah, sand crabs, they're so yummy. But this, this crab's too cute to eat. So we won't be, wouldn't eat this crab. And we have just about everything highlighted here. And this one's an easy one to color in because, well, you could color it in different, different colors, you could make it a rainbow crab if you really wanted to. As an artist, you guys can change the colors up. You could add bits to it. You can do what you like. Hi, Megan and Ava, welcome. Thanks for joining, joining us. Now today's uh, under the sea or sea creatures. And I chose, chose a crab, a mermaid, a shark, and a whale, just to hopefully some, to make the boys and girls happy. All right, I'm just gonna color this in, and then I'm gonna show you a couple of ways you can add some shading just to, to make it a little bit even better. So I've just got a, uh, one of my red brush tip markers. See the brush is well used. I'm just coloring in all the smaller sort of sections first. Notice how I'm coloring with the long direction, not trying to color sideways there, but coloring with the long part. And sometimes it's good to outline what you're coloring in first. That can help. And then you can color in. So short, and long strokes, depending on what you're coloring in. You wanna have control, people. Practice helps with your control. 
Now, if you've subscribed to my uh, YouTube channel, you know, you might have noticed that I've uh, put up a couple of new videos. I've got a really quick how-to YouTube short on how to draw a dolphin with really quick, quick lines. I've also got a little monster one up there. There we go. And you can see that my crab's looking pretty good. All right, what I would do now is if I wanted to add a bit of shading onto it, if you've watched some of my videos, you know that I like the light source coming from that side. So I might put some darker red around the bottom of here. It's probably a bit hard to see. Darker red on that side, on the under right hand side underneath. We could even put some on there. No, I'm, because you can't see that that much. It might not show up. All right, there we have our cute crab. If you wanted to, you could put some little highlights. If you've got a white pencil, you could put a bit where the light might hit, which would be on the top of the crab, but you don't have to. You could just leave it flat coloring if you like. I like to put a few highlights in. Light coming from the top, highlighting there. All right, Mr. Crab, don't get snappy. All righty -o. we're gonna move this crab up and we're going to do the whale. And so I'm just gonna move that crab up off the page and I'm going to show you how to draw the whale next. So the whale, Hey Nick, welcome, thanks for joining us. And the whale is basically going to be a rounded light rectangle for a start like so. Let's hope that's, yep, that's in the middle of the middle. And then we're going to bring it up, curve up line like so. And another, just curve this, and this is gonna curve up like that. And then we're gonna draw a tail. Now, if you want to draw the tail, make it easier for yourself, you can draw an oval shape and then just make it pointy on one end and bring it back in. That can help as well. Okay, so there's my body of the whale, and we're gonna need a fin. Now I've been lucky enough sometimes when I've got been fishing out off Mooloola Bar to see some whales and they are amazing creatures, the old humpbacks. And we're gonna put the eye on. You can put the eye where you want. Sometimes if you push it more towards the front, it can look pretty good. And depending on how big you want your smile, I'm just gonna do a, a shorter smile today. Now this was one of the one of the characters that even though it's so simple, it took me a while to sort of work out what looked good, where you position the eye, and how to do the rest of it. And that's just like the the whale sprouting some water off. This one I'm going to use a slightly thicker sharpie for the outer lines. And I'm going to use a thinner one for the inner lines. Except for the eyeball, I'm just gonna create like so. But the smile and the water, I'm just gonna do with a thinner one. Now with your colouring on that one, I probably won't colour this one in today unless we got get some more time later on. But with your colouring, you could just do a lighter belly colour and a, and a darker top part. Or you could just leave it all the one colour. There's a pretty simple, cute whale picture. All right, let's move on to the mermaid.
and get another piece of paper. You might want to use the same piece, what you already have. And I'm just going to bring, there we are. You can see, I'll, I'll just have that on there so you can see the mermaid whilst I draw, draw her. There we are. Okay. Let's have a look at the mermaid, the basic shape today that we're gonna use, and we're gonna simplify this mermaid right down into shapes, and that is a circle. Remember to practice drawing circles, and we can draw with our whole arm, not just our wrist. But the more we practice drawing, the better we're gonna get. So it's gonna start with a circle, and then we're going to draw a curve line coming down and around and up, almost like another, pretend they're drawing another circle. And then this one's coming down and into back and back up. So sort of looks a bit funny at the moment, but uh, we're gonna draw that. We are then going to put the arms on the mermaid and that is a simple straight line with a curved line and then coming back like so. So that the arm is narrower down here, the hand, and it's wider at the top. And we're gonna mat match that on the other side. Like so. Mm, it might be a need to be a little bit longer. Remember, no such thing as mistakes, it's all learning. And you've got to really be looking as an artist to try and get things matching. If you can, that looks pretty good now. All right, the bikini is two oval shapes. One, two shapes for, oval shapes for the bikini. And then this part here is going to be like a, a V or a triangle, part of a triangle, like so. And I'm just gonna draw two oval shapes for the tail the same size and then make them pointy. So remember, um, Simple lines and shapes create all these characters. And you can see that I'm just using, I've used a few different shapes and lines to create her so far. We're gonna save her hair till the end, okay? Because you could put your own hair on and I'm gonna show you a few few different options. It's up to you. Okay, a little, little smile. And you can draw the, the cheek, the, the rosy cheeks on if you like. That's ovals, and then the eyes, about there and there, are tall oval shapes. And we're gonna color those in. Leave a white dot, and flick out your little eyelashes out to the side. I'm going to zoom in a bit so you guys can see that a bit clearer. There you go. You can see that a little bit better now. Probably can't see my actual other picture as well though. So I might just, ooh, yeah. All right, the hair. The hair is, you could have her hair flowing out like so, out there. I kind of like this. I'm going to show you how to roughly plan this. You're going to start with a almost like a circle so or a big oval shape look at that big oval shape and that's to plan the hair out so the hair comes down behind and then back out so watch what i do now her hair is going to come out with a little bit there and then it's going to come down and then it's going to come back onto that that line there and then it's going to come join up here one two and then join back onto this circle so her hair sort of flows out like so 
Now, it looks a little bit funny because she's got no fringe, so we need to bring a line, a curve line around. One that way, maybe two that way, then another one that way, and then another one that way, down like so. And there we have ourselves a very simple and cute mermaid that we can now outline and colour in. Let's do that. Let's outline and colour her in. Using the thin one, outlining. Now for those people that are new, I've been doing, this is the sixth, sixth live class um, that I've done in a row. We're on day six. If you've joined us for the first time, hope you're enjoying it. If you've been here for every one of them, well done. All of them will be on YouTube, my YouTube channel, Peter Evans Art. Make sure you've subscribed if you're enjoying the content. And give us a like if you, if you can as well, that'd be great. This one here is an extra, oh, ultra fine, sorry, ultra fine point Sharpie. And just gonna go around these areas, the hair. Now I've tried to keep these drawings suitable for kids in primary school. Some of them may be a bit more challenging than others, but I'm hoping that when you challenge yourself and you keep practicing, you're gonna improve all the time. Never give up, keep persisting, keep trying. That's how we get better, we keep trying. Now you'll notice that my, my mermaid might be slightly different to the one I drew before, and that's gonna happen. It's not gonna be exactly the same every time. Otherwise we could just go to the photocopier. If you wanted it exactly the same. Okay, coloring in some black areas, two, three. And there we have ourselves a little mermaid. Now it's time to color her in. I'm gonna color her in. All right, I'm just gonna rub out most of these, all these pencil lines. When you're rubbing out, a tip you'll notice that I hold my page, because if you don't, sometimes when you rub too hard, it can crunch crumple up. So see how I'm holding my hand over my page when I'm rubbing out? That can help as well. Stop it from moving. All right, I'm gonna color most of her in with textures or markers. And then I'm gonna use some pencils for certain areas. I like, you, this is where you can be creative. You don't have to draw her tail green. It could be pink, could be purple, could be rainbow, could be whatever colours you guys like. But we've drawn it, now's the time you can add bits. If you wanted to, you could put a crown or a tiara on her. You could do whatever you wanted to. I've just drawn a simple one to show you. I have been getting some uh, emails and photos of people with their drawings, which is fantastic. I've also been getting some suggestions of things that people would like to see me draw on YouTube. I'm here to help you guys out with your drawings. So if you do have something that you want to cover, want me to cover on YouTube, I can. The next couple of days, well, this week I've got um, tomorrow's monsters, little cute monsters, then it's vehicles. Then I've got, uh, gonna be looking at a landscape with a combi in it or a seascape. And then I'm gonna show people how to do some faces on Friday. All right, so I'm gonna have pink hair. I think pink hair will look really good. 
So using my textures to color in, you might have pencils. Trying to be neat as possible. coloring in the longer direction. What's everyone's favorite uh, underwater creature? Under the sea. I've already got a couple of, a, a dolphin video on my YouTube channel, but any other suggestions that people like under the sea? And let me know in the chat if you like. She's looking very good, nice and neat. Try your best. This is where you, you don't want to you don't want to wreck your picture by rushing the colouring. It's just as important as as the drawing itself. Be super careful. Hold your textures or your pencils correctly. All right, I've got the base colors of her down now. I don't know whether I've got a skin color that, no, I don't think I've got a nice skin colored texture. So I'm going to see if I've got a nice skin colored pencil, which I do have. This is uh, the skin color that I'm gonna put on her. It's gonna be fairly light. And I'm gonna color it in neatly. Nice and light. You can color your skin color, whatever you decide. Sharks, whales, seahorses, love the sea turtles. Excellent. Thanks, Miss Monza, is it? <laughs> Thanks, kids. Re appreciate your comments. I had, have drawn a little sea turtle on my YouTube channel as well. So you could check that one out if you get a spare bit of time. Remember, it's Peter Evans Art on YouTube, is my channel. And I'm hoping to have lots of videos up there, so you guys might want to cruise there and, and check, it, check them out. Okay, so because the hair is pink, I'm going to do the dark bit of it purple. And I'm just going to... Because purple and pink are very close on the color wheel. So I'm just gonna put some purple in the hair to make some darker bits. So just in here, like her head would put a bit of shading on it. Because if you look at anyone's hair, it's not all exactly the same color. Someone might have brown hair, but the light hits it differently and it can be lighter and darker in different spots. I'm gonna, and when you get a bit older like me, sometimes it turns gray. I think, I think mine's just starting to get a few. <laughs> there we go. So I'm putting some interest into the hair with a little bit of purple. And I might do the same with the dark green for the bottom of the scales. You could put some little scale texture in there too if you wanted to. You could do something like, let me just draw a little bit out here where you can see it. You might put on some little scale patterns like so. On, on the, on here, you could even draw a little fish next to this mermaid if you wanted to. Have some bubbles. I've just drawn a simple mermaid to show you. That circles are one of the most um, used shapes, or one of the most used shapes in drawing. They, you can get a lot of stuff around circles. So I've got some green, some purple and pink there, okay?
Hey, is that Reese? is it? How are you, mate? Just hope you're well. In fact, I, I'm wondering if there's anyone else that from even before 10 years ago that I taught that might be still, still here. I think I've got some children of kids that I used to teach. How's that? That's making me feel a bit older. <laughs> All right, I'm just gonna put a little bit of darker areas underneath some of these bits just to show you guys. Some shadows, just a little bit on the underneath sides. And on the because the light's coming from here, I'm just putting some shading on the right hand lower sides of the mermaid, okay? Learning how to draw with simple lines and shapes is great, but then knowing where to put highlights and where to put shading is another one that makes your drawings go from good to great, okay? so. If you understand how light hits object, how it hits rounded surfaces, how it hits other surfaces, you can do some really awesome drawings. And here is my cute little um, mermaid. I'm going to move on now to the shark. So I'll just leave her there. And I'll just now move her out the way. And we're gonna draw the shark, maybe just, just under, underneath her so I'm not wasting too much paper. So I'll move her up so she's not in the view and I'll see if I can move the shark in. Ooh, maybe not quite get it in the camera with it zoomed in. All right, the shark. Let's draw the shark. I'm gonna show you how to start the shark. Okay, the shark is gonna start by a curved line. Curved line coming around like a big C. Or you could, if you wanted to, bring that around as an oval shape like so. But you don't need the whole, whole lot. All right, so I've drawn the big outer curve of the shark. Now I've got to work out that I want the point for the nose. And I've got to point it around you could make it quite pointy if you want. And then this sort of curves back in a little bit and then kicks around back the other way and then comes to find a point down for the tail like so. This part here is the tricky part, okay? You got your curve, but then you gotta get that point and you gotta curve it out. Don't try and curve it back that way, curve it out and then it's got to come back around and sort of flow and get narrow as it comes around. What an impressive um, creature sharks are. They are amazing. All right, as a, as a boy, I used to love sharks, draw, drawing sharks and watching shark shows, etc., etc. although Jaws wasn't, wasn't that great. <laughs> All right. We've got a, another little shape, a curve coming in and then another curve coming across like so for the mouth. What we can do here is we're going to get the structure of the mouth ready for the teeth. So just notice how I'm coming back in that way for a little bit. All right, and the teeth, this is the top row of teeth. And then this is the bottom row of teeth. We're just gonna put some little, and then there would be teeth coming down in the background there as well. Cause that's, and then this is all inside of the mouth. We're going to put an eye on and you could make it look a bit fiercer with an eyebrow. I'll put a little, a little dot there for the nostril. Let's put some gill lines on. I'm gonna go four lines for the gills. And a 
curve line for the fin, curve it out like so, and then curve it, curve it like so. They've got some amazing curves. Things like sharks have got great curves, but they're quite tricky. Same with cars. Cars can be quite tricky to draw as well with all the curves. So I'm just going to put that fin there and I've sort of got it worked out that on the other side that that would be pretty similar. And then I've got the, the big shark that come, the fin that comes out of the water like so. And then for the tail, I'm just going to draw a curve shape like curve line then another curve line and another curve line. Depending on the type of shark, some of them have these other little, little bits that come out here as well. Now sharks are usually at some time, well a lot of fish are lighter on the bottom of their bellies than they are on the top and that's so other fish that are underneath them they camouflage so when they look up they see a lot it sort of blends in with the sky the lightness of the sky okay now we're gonna put some shading on here on this shark now this is a slender shark he's quite quite thin you could widen that up if you want I might even just see if I can widen this a little bit through there. Give him a bit more muscle. Now some of, if you've watched like Finding Nemo and that, some of the characters on there like Brucey the shark is pretty funny I thought, watching that movie. And then, uh, what's there, another one, Shark Tale. There's lots of cool movies with um, secret, animals and creatures like I've said in previous previous uh, sessions you know you never know one day if you love drawing you could be a person who designs a character for a movie a movie that my kids are watching a bit lately is uh, back to the outback and the penguins movie penguins of Madagascar that I've watched it's quite funny don't mind, don't mind watching a few animations. Going over that with it, with a pen, Sharpie. This is fins in front there, so we don't draw that line down there. Just concentrating here, trying to make it look as good as I can for you guys. Live, a bit of extra pressure. All right, you can see my sharks looking pretty good so far. I hope your sharks are looking great. I'm sure they would be. You guys are practicing and keep keep drawing. I've given you some tips here so far. I'm just going to rub out some of my pencil lines because I'm going to show you how we can make this 3D. I think we've got a bit of time left. Yep, we've got a few more minutes. If you have to run off early, that's okay. I've think, I think I said 30 minutes, but I don't know whether I've been able to stop at 30 minutes yet. <laughs> Seem to Go a little bit longer. All right, so again, light source coming from here. Pretend this is a light bulb. Light coming from there. Darker shading underneath, even though the belly, we'll, we'll pretend the belly is not the lighter part of the, the shark, but we'll put a little bit of shading through here. Now, remember three things that control shading is layering, like I'm doing here, keep going over it. Pressure, how hard you press, press, and the pencil type. Now, because I've only got a HB pencil, 
I'm trying to do my shading with the one pencil. Okay, underneath here it might be a bit darker because this is on the back and this is the darker part of the shark. So I'm gonna make that quite dark down along this bottom edge. Now, if it was me, I'd turn this around so it was easier, but I'm just keeping it in the one spot to show you guys. Okay, I'm just adding some more shading and layering. In a good drawing, here's another tip for you. You wanna have some light, mid and dark areas. So what I mean by that is some white, some almost really dark like black areas and some in between grays. Now you can see that I've got it, it's a bit sketchy, but that's okay, I don't mind it being sketchy. I'm using a HB pencil and making it fairly loose and sketchy looking sort of shark. Layering. Just gonna finish this off, this little bit here. Make that look a bit rounded by, the, by sort of putting darker on the bottom right hand side. And put a little bit of darkness through there. Going up to lighter because the light would hit the top of the, the fin. And I'm going to actually do inside here black. Now remember, if you if you have liked these videos, you can give us a like, subscribe if you haven't done so already. And if you have, thank you. That's fantastic. That just helps my channel get out to other people who might be able to benefit from some of my little tips that I've been giving out. Putting some darker on there to make it look rounded. And don't forget this fin is underneath so it's going to be quite dark in there so as you can see there um, I've uh, done some shading on my shark now if you're not sure about different types of pencils here's a little bit about pencils on the back of them it says a number or HB sorry letters HB, sometimes it'll say 2B or 4B or 6B or 9B. The higher the number with B, that means the darker the pencil and the softer the lead. For example, this one here says 6B on it. If I use that, it's gonna be quite dark. So I can use that to get into some of these darker areas and softer. You gotta be careful with these six Bs and pencils though, because if you drop them, they can break pretty easy. I'm sure all of you guys have had a pencil that no matter how many times you try to sharpen it, the lead keeps falling out. That happens a lot to six B pencils. Okay. I think that looks pretty, pretty good. Oops, let's just bring the rest of his tail into the picture. There's my finished shark looking pretty good. All right, and I'm just gonna turn it around. Okay guys, I thank you for joining me today. I hope you've had a good time. Uh, kids at school, keep up that drawing. Everyone at home, thanks a lot. I will see you tomorrow, hopefully, for how to draw cute monsters, all right? Thanks very much, everyone. I'll see ya. Bye.